According to Chinese media and sources familiar with the matter, which are pretty reliable, CATL has been working on a more energy dense version of the lithium iron phosphate battery packs. In case you're unaware, CATL is the company that's been supplying Tesla with these next generation cells that go in the Model 3 rear wheel drive in the United States and North America. And yes, they even go in rear wheel drive Model Ys over in China, which is probably the best selling model given in previous earnings calls. Tesla has said that their LFP Teslas are near nearly half of their total vehicles built and considering there's only one LFP vehicle in the North American market I'm pretty confident in saying that that rear wheel drive Model Y is likely the best seller over in China and it's almost all advantages with this chemistry in fact energy density is just the one downside so you do have a heavier battery pack that doesn't have as much energy in it but thanks to CATL figuring out a way to inject more manganese into the chemistry that allegedly is able to allow them to jump up quite a bit from a 60 kilowatt hour pack now up to a 72 kilowatt hour pack likely within a similar sized footprint because Chinese media is saying these next generation cells are being shipped to Tesla in the fourth quarter of this year and they likely will debut in a new Model Y or Model 3 by early 2023. So lithium iron phosphate allows for a safer design that's less prone to catching on fire. It has a higher cycle life so it can be discharged and charged up again more often and because of that higher cycle life and stability it can be charged to 100% daily so you don't have to worry too much about battling between oh stop at 80 or stop at 90% so the only downside of course is that your range typically takes a hit but now that we're seeing the energy density increase I think we may actually start to see lithium iron phosphate take more shape into longer range vehicles not just standard range Teslas so this is why I feel even more confident that iron phosphate is kind of the future of electric vehicle charging because yeah it's using a different chemistry but that's important when you consider the ultimate bottleneck with EV adoption is production capacity and finding iron for your batteries is a heck of a lot easier than trying to track down nickel or cobalt, which cobalt is kind of a dirty mineral because there's been some cases of unethical mining practices going on. So people are trying to avoid cobalt if at all possible. Lithium iron phosphate requires absolutely zero cobalt, which is good. And Tesla has said they're trying to figure out a way to eliminate cobalt entirely from their 4680 batteries, but that's pretty much all we've been hearing for years is that there's a plan to eliminate it but LFP is already doing that there's no plan to eliminate it because it's already gone and not to mention nickel which is a much harder material to track down and much more expensive than iron and manganese so if Tesla is able to find this perfect combination of higher energy density and higher cycle life plus being able to use cheaper materials that are more widely accessible that's how you can drastically lower the price of battery production but more important than that you can ramp up battery production much much faster and I think Massive props need to go towards CATL for finding these chemistries and figuring out ways of mass producing them. And now that they're addressing basically the biggest compromise of lithium iron phosphate and finding ways to build battery packs with good energy density, but also no use of cobalt and nickel in the chemistry, I think there's a very, very clear path to success here. In fact, after finding out how problematic and how difficult it's been for Tesla to ramp up the 4680 batteries and knowing how we're seeing noticeable energy density improvements improvements with lithium iron phosphate. I personally have kind of a wild card belief that I'm willing to throw out there and say that I think nickel based batteries will eventually only find themselves in the heavy trucking space. So yeah, like people who want longer range Teslas right now have to sit with 2170 cells that have nickel and cobalt in them. But I think that over the next couple years, as we see more hybrid chemistries with manganese and iron phosphate merging and turning this kind of LFMP standard into a thing, we'll get to a point where you'll get Model 3s and Model Ys that can get over 300 miles of range without having to use any nickel in the cathode. And that way, the limited nickel we have available on the market will eventually just go towards vehicles like the Tesla Semi, which are a lot more weight dependent. They're going to need very energy dense cells. Same thing with higher range versions of the Cybertruck. Like if you want to cross country tow with your pickup truck and you want 400 or 500 miles of range, that's going to need more high nickel content in the cathode. But you know, before Tesla was getting around around 270 or 260 miles of range with a 60 kilowatt hour pack in their most popular models, the Model 3 and the Model Y. Now that we're seeing a reasonable increase to the point of 72 kilowatt hours in a Model Y pack, still using lithium iron and manganese phosphate, if they're able to continue with these types of advancements, I think Tesla will find a way to get to around 320 or 330 miles of range once they squeeze out a little bit more energy with these packs. And especially if they find a way to update the Model 
3 assembly line and switch to single piece castings and more structural packs, maybe using more BYD blade batteries in the Model 3. That could help them reduce on weight, improve efficiency so that you could actually get a 300 mile range with around a 70 kilowatt hour pack. And if that day starts coming around, why then would you need to keep putting nickel based cells in your long range Model 3s and Ys to get them to go 330 to 350 miles of range? What would matter more is using cheaper materials that allow you to ramp up faster and secure higher profit margins as long as demand outpaces supply. So there's a lot of assuming going on on my part. Like, I don't think Tesla is going to eliminate the nickel based cells in the sexy lineup within the next year, but over the next four to five years, I think we might actually get to a point where all Tesla crossovers in sedans are basically relying on iron based cathodes with just a little bit of manganese mixed in there. And that may have an impact on the cycle life a little bit. We don't have long term data on how these LFMP batteries are going to age, but considering they don't have the same elements in them as the nickel based cathodes, and that's really what breaks down, I would assume that the cycle life is probably pretty close to that of an LFP battery. Maybe a little bit worse just because of that manganese mixed in there, but LFP is I think where the future of EV batteries are going, and I do believe Tesla when they say the Model Y will become the best selling vehicle globally next year. Simply on production capacity alone, they're going to have four major factories that are basically designated to all building 500,000 plus Model Ys a year. So if you just look at the best selling vehicles in the world, yeah, through production capacity, Tesla will be able to scale up the Model Y past something like the Toyota RAV4. And I think finding more raw materials that are accessible and cheaper, like iron and manganese, is going to allow Tesla to scale up like that. And hopefully it means that in the future you can buy a long range Model Y that will have over 300 miles of range and maybe even let you charge it to 100% every day. So those are my predictions mixed in with some news to expect. It seems like China definitely gets the cream of the crop with new battery technology, but it definitely slowly finds its way into the American market. So all good things to look forward to in terms of battery chemistry, just surprisingly not much of it coming from the 4680, which I thought would be a bigger deal by now than it is. Hopefully Tesla can figure out the ramp up there. But anyway, thank you all for supporting on Patreon. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again and have an excellent rest of your day.